Hi. I love you. And I want to help you love you more. In one of the earlier speeches we saw this evening by Jay Silver, he said, it's useful to feel alive and fun. In fact, what could be more useful than feeling alive and fun? And so I'm here to present to you a little bit of an instructional manual on how to feel alive. This is my speciality and I've spent the greater part of the last 10 years doing experiments in aliveness. We were given one of the most intricate machines that's ever been known to man, and yet it's not man-made. It is the human body. And in the work I do, I do experiments in the human body in order to rediscover this feeling of aliveness. Tonight we're talking about change makers and being the future, making change. And I'm here to share the message that that change starts from inside. It starts from inside of our bodies. And until we revisit this instructional manual on how to live inside of this human body to fully experience our aliveness, right, we'll never be able to experience the amazing creativity and the future and all that it brings. Right? It starts from feeling good, alive, inside. And so the work I do is uh, based on raising the bar on health. This conceptualization of health is something that we've just taken for granted and we say, you know, I'm not sick, so I'm healthy, right? As if health is only defined by absence of disease. And my question is, what if there's more? What if there's more to life, more to health? And so the work I do raises the bar on health to not only understand living without disease, but really understand health as living with maximum vitality. In that, what we look at is my baseline of understanding coming from something called natural hygiene. And it's based upon the practice of fasting. And I know fasting might scare you. We just had tea break, right? We find that what happens when we stop taking in solid fibrous matter and we don't eat for a certain period of time is that the energy that would normally go to digestion, this is up to 70% of all available energy, it can turn around and instead go to give you more vitality, more energy. It can heal and cleanse at the cellular level. And so in natural hygiene, one of the foundational, fundamental understandings that we have is that the body can and will heal itself. Right? And this is something you know. You've seen this if you've had a scrape or a burn, or if you've ever broken a bone. What happens? Well, nothing. You leave it there. Maybe you'll set it, maybe you'll cover it up, and the body goes on to repair itself. Well, that can happen at any level. And so the work that I do in my naturopathy practice is coming back to empower people to take their health back into their own hands because it's been so long that we've given it away to doctors and medical professionals. Right? As if you've lived in your body for 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 or more years, don't know anything about the body that you're living in. Right? And so tonight we're going to be looking at this instructional manual to figure out really how, again, we can get the most aliveness and sense of vitality so that we can do these amazing things and make this change. Yeah. So we'll be looking at simple practices and learning to reprioritize this aspect of health in our lives. It's really, really, really simple. We'll start with these four things, and this is what will guide us through. This portal of education relies on these four Asians, right? Hydration, elimination, respiration, and restoration. And these are four things that you can start experimenting with and applying in your life right now. Yeah? And I don't know anything about your body because it's your body, right? So please don't believe anything I say, rather verify me. Make these an experiment. Become a scientist in the own living laboratory of your body. Starting off with hydration, we'll start to look at the fact that we are simply not drinking as much water as we need to be drinking every day. The body uses and loses three liters of water simply by getting out of bed in the morning, right? So somewhere around that three liters is what we should be putting back in. Anyone out there? Three liters of water a day? My guess is probably not. I've collected a lot of data in my clinic over the years, and I found that most people in the world are definitely dehydrated. Not only because we're not drinking enough water, but also because we're doing lots of things that are taking water away from us. And so when we look at hydration, it's a two-sided The other side of the coin is very much dehydration. So certain things that we know about, perhaps beverages like coffee and alcohol, these are incredibly dehydrating, two or four times the amount of volume, respectively. Right? Salty foods, foods that are overly cooked, dried, or fried, 
right? Things like being in air conditioning. These are dehydrating for the human body, and so we have to be very aware of this and always mitigate it, right? Perhaps we minimize those dehydrating things while maximizing our hydration itself. Moreover, the kind of water that we're drinking today isn't necessarily the water that our body can understand, but don't worry, there's always a solution. And often it's coming back to nature in the natural way of how things work. In certain countries like India, we're only concerned with getting clean water, and that's enough, and that's a lot to be thankful for. But the thing is that in those cleaning processes, in developed countries and less developed countries alike, the processes are so effective and efficient that they remove everything from the water, including the minerals. And minerals in water, these make the water whole. So just like this concept of whole foods, whole fruits, whole vegetables, right? Hydrating foods. Bet you've never heard fruits and vegetables are good for you before, right? We find out that when we have whole water in the same respect, that this nourishes and hydrates our body in a way that the body can understand. Quite often when we're drinking water that's empty or it's been put through certain processes of cleaning, the body doesn't recognize it. It'll come out as clear urine or you'll just feel like you have to urinate all the time. And so the kind of water that we're meant to be drinking as human bodies, these living machines, is spring water. Water that's been filtered through the earth, right? Run through the dirt and filtered, run over rocks over thousands of years so all of the minerals can come inside. This is the water that our body fully understands. There's a really cool website by a guy named Daniel Vitalis. It's findaspring.com. So I encourage you, wherever you are in the world, to look this up and find a spring near you, maybe. Find one that's not on the map and add it. So this aspect of water is something that cannot be misunderstood. Because the truth of the matter is that you're made of anywhere from 60 to 80 or even 90% of water. And this isn't water bottles in your thighs that you're walking around with. This is water in your blood and your limbs. This is the essence of what you are. And so really starting to allow this river to flow and allow things to move through you is incredibly number one priority for working well, for having this machine be well oiled, if you will. From hydration, we'll head on to elimination. And the thing is that we tend to overly focus on eating well, you know, and doing exercise and all these things. But until we start to talk about what's coming out or perhaps what's not coming out, that's when we really get the picture of health. So you have full permission to laugh because I'm going to talk about poop. All right? When we talk about elimination and in talking about poop, this should be news to most of you out there. The human body is made to be pooping once per meal per day. Yeah. So if you're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's three times a day that you're pooping. Just like babies, just like dogs, when we think about it, it makes sense. Something comes in, something goes out. Yeah. And so in following this, some of you might think, wow, this is crazy. Others of you are thinking, yeah, I'm totally on, on track here. We should do a workshop afterwards, <laughs> right, where you get to ask your neighbor how often they poop. In fact, I challenge you, tonight, go home, talk to someone who's not in this room, and ask them how often they poop. It can be revolutionary, because the thing is that this is pretty much our best indicator of health. Because if we're putting things in all the time, which I think you are, because we already talked about the fact that not most people in the world today are fasting like me, right? I'm not fasting all the time, mind you. We'll, we can talk about that in a second. But when we talk about elimination, we find out that this is indeed an indicator of how well our machine is working or not. If we had a machine where we were just jamming things in all day long and nothing was coming out, you would think that things would get clogged after some time right? and eventually break. Well, our body is that beautifully intricate machine, and so we have to make sure that things aren't only going in and that they're sufficiently coming out. Right. Well, I have good news for you because my guess is somewhere around 80% of you would say, no, I'm not pooping once per meal per day. And again, I have thousands of data forms backing this up, showing that somewhere around 80% of the world is what I consider to be constipated. Right? Pooping less than once per meal per day. And so I have a bit of a, a task list for you, a solution highway on how to move your bowels more. All right, three ways to poop more. If you're taking notes, how to poop more is the title of your list. All right, number one, hydration. We already talked about that, how necessary it is. If you think about it, you need that liquid in there. You need that hydration to move things along, the large intestine. So number one, 
on hydration, and that includes hydrating foods, like eating way more fruits and vegetables. However much you think more is, three times that, okay? Number two way to poop more is to realign yourself to the correct position of defecation. And this is indeed squatting. So in India, this is pretty normal. But in many countries around the world, we have something that I call the white porcelain throne, right? This toilet where we just sit. Well, the thing is, we have a muscle wrapping around the end of the colon, and the muscle's tight when you're standing up or when you're sitting down, like in a chair like you are now. And that's so that you don't poop in your pants. But the thing is, as soon as you bring your knees up toward your shoulders in a squat-like position, all of a sudden that muscle relaxes, creating a clear passageway for you to get things moving. Right? And we're definitely talking about getting things moving. So number two way to poop more is to squat. And I've started saying to people, make squatting as much a part of pooping as is pulling down your pants. Right? You wouldn't go to the toilet without pulling down your pants. Don't go to the toilet without squatting. Number three, then, way to poop more is simple. It's to give yourself time, to make time. <laughs> to go to the toilet when you don't even think you have to, and squat there. I'm a really big fan of getting your mind off of things, so if you want to bring your phone, check out Facebook. Right? You can write me an email while you're on the toilet, I don't mind. Right? And as soon as the prison guard leaves, the prisoners can escape. <laughs> easy. Your body knows exactly what to do. It wants to heal itself. We simply have to give it the time and space to do so. Right? There are other elements that I would add to this how to poop more list. Perhaps things like making sure you have enough good bacteria, beneficial bacteria in your body. So that includes things like probiotics and not only in pill form, but also in food form. One of the most powerful ways to get good beneficial bacteria regulating your digestive system as well as your immune system directly into the gastrointestinal canal. Now check out one of my new projects, the microbiome think tank. So we'll move on from pooping and seeing that elimination definitely is about number two, but it's also about these other things. Sweating more, moving around. The other part of our circulatory system is our lymphatic system. Does anyone know what that is? That's where the water is in the body. But unlike the cardiovascular system where you have your heart, the lymphatic system has no pump. And so it's pumped indeed by your movement. But the thing is, we're all day like this. There's not a lot of movement there, right? We need this big movement. We need movement upside down, back and forth, right? I'm also a yoga asana teacher, and we find that yoga asana today is one of the most impeccable ways to move the lymphatic system. And so if you haven't tried out a yoga class, here's your pitch. Number three here on movement in other ways on elimination is to breathe more. So everyone take a deep breath with me. Yeah. What that did in your body is something that no pharmaceutical could ever do. The effect that that had on every single one of your physiological systems is so profound. You probably feel the difference inside of you. Perhaps you're a little calmer. Perhaps your body feels a little looser. Perhaps your heart rate dropped, and blood pressure. Perhaps you feel more ability to connect and be fully alive. That's what we're talking about in general. So this takes us to our next Asian, which is respiration. And we find that this breath is something that we definitely underestimate today. And that huge breath, that breath that comes all the way down to the belly, expands wide through the ribs, and comes all the way up through the chest and shoulders, this breath is the breath of a baby. This is the breath of how we are meant to be breathing. But how many of you breathe like that normally? You want to do it again? Should we do it again? Ready? It's all good. We find that the more that we can stop and take a breath like this, the more we make a circuit in our brain pathway to be able to make it more of a habit. And the more we breathe like that on a regular basis, the more everything's going to come into balance in our body. That's the main dictator of our physiology. And so we find that respiration, definitely the gas exchange, you know, you learned about that in school. You exhale carbon dioxide. Among the air that you inhale is oxygen. And this is elemental to our being. We can't survive too long without breathing. Whereas without eating, remember, we're back on fasting. We can survive a long time. I just finished the 30-day fast. We find that this is what reconnects us. The body has everything it needs 
to thrive. We simply have to open up the pathways, like our breath, in order for it to find this balance. So this respiration is not only at a macroscopic level with the breath, but also at a microscopic level, at our cells. Because guess what? Your cells are getting busy all day long doing exactly what you're doing. They're eating and pooping, and eating and pooping, and they're eating and they're pooping. Hopefully you're also pooping as much as your cells are, right? And we find that for cellular respiration, what needs to happen not only is hydration, which we've already talked about, this dense quantity of minerals, definitely enough calories, which we're at no shortage of in the world of today. But more important than anything, we need chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is found in green leafy plants. I'm sure that you know that leafy greens are very important. If we were outside right now, I would ask you to look around and you would see what color surrounding you. Green, of course, because this is the number one thing that we're meant to be having in our diet today that's completely missing at times from the human plate. And so my goal, again, is not to tell you anything that you don't already know. It's simply to remind you of these things to reprioritize. This is the instructional manual on how to feel good and give your body what it wants to give this machine what it needs to be able to live to its fullest. So when we have leafy greens in the body, when they come into the bloodstream, there's an exchange of chlorophyll, detoxifying the blood and recharging it. Right? So that is the best well-oiled system and machine that we could ever imagine. From here, our final principle that we'll be talking about is restoration. And what this consists of is stop and relax. Stop and relax. We could even take one of those breaths again to remember the importance of relaxation. I mentioned that that breath is going to reset things in your body. Specifically, we're looking at the autonomic nervous system where we have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic parts of the nervous system. You've heard about these before, right? The sympathetic is the stress response. Maybe you've heard of it as flight or fight. And the parasympathetic is the relaxation response. Well, that second setting is what we need in order to have any kind of healing or self-regulation of this inner machine. Well, in the 21st century, most people were way overstressed. My tips for that are to stop, put your legs up the wall, your bum against the wall. This is the fastest thing to do to change your physiology entirely. And get proper sleep, go to bed early, wake up early. That can do more on its own than anything else. And so my intention with this is to give you these principles of alignment so that you can get more excited in your life and feel as alive as you're meant to. So start applying and just remember, you don't have to change anything. Just be more conscious and get excited about feeling good. Thank you.